Hi, I'm Arnaut. In today's lesson, which is one of the lessons in our series on measurement, I'd like to return to a topic that we discussed several lessons ago. Area. The area of different shapes. Now, if area measures the muchness of a shape, then volume measures the muchness of an object. At first that might seem a strange statement, but I'm going to make sense of it in just a few moments. Before doing so, let's cross to Asanda and establish what questions the students with her have for us today. Hey guys, today we are at Aurora Private School. I'm so excited to be here. There's a lot of work to be done, so we have to get going. But before we do that, my friends have only got one thing to say. What is Today we are at Aurora Private School and in today's lesson we're talking about volume. I get teased about my volume, it's too high but anyway, doesn't matter. How are you? I'm good, thanks and you? I'm very good, thank you. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I love sports and socialising and I'm a very talkative person. Okay, okay. And when you're hanging out with your friends and you know, you're just having fun, what kind of things do you guys do? Well, when I'm with my friend Liz, I go ice skating or we just watch a movie. Okay. And then tell me, when it gets to the mats, how are you feeling about that? I'm okay, but exams are coming up. It's going to be tough. Okay. Hope but I do well. you, you got it together. <laughs> yeah, I got okay. it together. So, Jamie Lee, you got a question, right? Yeah. Go for it. When I hear the word volume, I think of my high fi not of mats. Does this word have any relationship in the two uses of it? Well, I know. <laughs> I guess that we could say, in as much as both uses of the word deal with muchness, they are related, but not much more than that. Now, without getting distracted, let me quickly link what we're doing to the curriculum. Measuring involves using measuring instruments to determine measurements in units appropriate to a situation so that we can solve problems. In this lesson, I want to extend our work on area to discuss problems that deal with volume. When we studied area, we defined it as follows. We said that area refers to the number of square units of a certain size needed to cover the surface of a figure. That definition modifies quite simply as follows when we talk about volume. What we would be talking about is we'd be talking about volume. And we say that volume refers to the number and now we don't deal with square units, but cubic units. So volume refers to the number of cubic units of a certain size needed to, and we're no longer covering, we're now filling, not the surface, but the interior, not of a figure, but of an object. And if we just present that neatly by itself, then we get the following. We say that volume refers to the number of cubic units of a certain size needed to fill the interior of an object. If I think about this little building block over here, and I think about this cube over here, then we can see that if we were to fill the same object using these small cubes, then we would need many more than if we filled it using these larger cubes. In other words, we need to find a way of relating the two cubes. That is, we need a conversion factor. Now the easiest way of establishing that is to determine how many of these small cubes fit inside the larger cube. We could literally take a number of those small cubes and see if we can pack together enough to fill the bigger cube. And in that way, we could create a conversion factor. Having established that we understand what we're talking about, 
I'd like to again do an investigation, just as we did with area. Here I have 48 of these little cubes. The question is, how many rectangular prisms, such as the one that I've got here, can I make using those 48 cubes? Well, of course, here is one. 4 by 4 by 3. If I now pick that up and I put it on top, then I have another arrangement. This one is 4 by 2 by 6.